OK, welcome back. So at the end, simple, we love Go. Today, I want to show you one of the reasons why we love it, tell you a story how we ended up using Go to guide our development decision uh, in the process of redesigning our API. So two years ago, we started to redesign our HTTP API. We wanted them to be more powerful, and we wanted to help our customer to adopt them. Therefore, we decided to develop official clients in several different languages, in addition to the Ruby clients that we have been providing for years. The D and Simple code base is mainly developed in three languages, Ruby, Go, and Erlang. Therefore, we decided to start working on two new official clients, one in Go and the other one in Elixir, a language based on the Erlang virtual machine. For weeks, I developed in parallel in three different languages every day. The more code I wrote, the more I realized that for some reason, the Go client was leading the development. In fact, my approach was to de develop a feature in Go and then in other languages. Now, it turned out it was not a coincidence. So Go is a strongly typed and very strict language, especially if you compare that to Ruby or Elixir. Some people believe that these are big constraints, and it is certainly a different way of coding. But thanks to these constraints, I realized that some design decisions that we made in the past also made the API harder to use with certain kind of languages, not just Go. So let me show you a few examples. Uh, now, the first API was written in Ruby, and it was largely influenced by how Ruby works internally. Consuming our API with Go allowed us to understand flows in our response format and design. For example, at some point, we realized that we were returning an array of strings to represent regions attached to a record. And instead, we, are, we were returning a string literal global when the record was attached to all the regions. So trying to parse this response in Go without relying on some deserialization hacks was really, really hard. Uh, clearly, it was a bad design decision to use different types to represent conceptually similar information. So Go has no traditional library versioning. We had to think up front about how we wanted to query or expose a resource, because changing the signature of the client later would not be trivial. So IDEs can be integers today, but they may become complex identifiers in the future or URL-friendly strings. We had to carefully design our API to be decoupled from our internal representation to avoid making changes to types or method signatures in the future. One more example. We also realized that in some cases, we abused optional parameters in our existing clients, or we overcomplicated method signatures. In Go, you have to explicitly pass all the arguments. Uh, hence, we had to carefully rethink the design of our clients and make them simpler. The simplicity of Go, along with some of its constraints, are sometimes treated as a limitation of the language. But instead, for us, these features force us to rethink the way we design our API. We used our Go client as the leading implementation, and we let it guide our design decisions. Whatever feature we could not easily and cleanly implement in Go, had to be simplified or removed from the code base. Today, we have five official API clients in five different languages, and they all share the same design, and Go had a really major impact on our decisions. People develop and live in different languages these days, and we wanted our API clients to be consistent in all the various languages. So thank you to Go, and thank you to the Go community for helping Go continue to grow and evolve, still remaining simple and clear.